Hello folks, thanks for watching again. I wasn't expecting to do a video so quickly after the kind of autism diagnosis process video, but we had a letter through from Bosco's paediatrician talking about next steps and their plans and what they want to book in. And I thought it was worth talking about because whilst it's booked three months away, it's highlighted one of the big problems that I think a lot of you will have experienced and issues that I just feel like already I'm banging my head against a bit of a wall because to go back a bit, Mrs. Sheepdog had a meeting with the paediatrician. It was like the community paediatrician at the Pilgrim Hospital in Boston, uh, Lincolnshire. And they basically had the conversations where she asked lots of questions about Bosco's development and about his abilities to make friends and this sort of thing. And when I read through the report, it feels like Mrs. Sheepdog has answered truthfully and she's correct about the things that she has said. But they've been interpreted in a completely different way to the way that they were asked really i guess or the way that she's answered the question now one big one that she picked up on straight away was they asked whether he had any problems with communication and she answered no not really you know we can understand him he understands us and that sort of thing you know he's okay but then after the fact she thought well okay no he's got a speech impediment he takes everything literally he you know, it has problems with kind of the cues, the social cues of knowing when someone doesn't really want an answer, knowing when to stop asking, knowing when to stop responding. You know, little bits like that that are kind of socially awkward communication skills. He doesn't seem to have them or they're not very well developed. And that's the sort of answer that perhaps they were expecting. But their question was, can he communicate, basically? And she has responded, yes, he can. He's not mute. He's not He's not shy about talking. He's not hiding away. He's not got kind of language problems to that extent that we can't understand him. He can ask us for food and drink and talk to us and have a conversation and ask me questions. And, you know, he's inquisitive and that sort of thing. But his communication isn't what you would consider you know oh, everything's fine tick that box you know there is there is issues to be worked on there so that was an interesting one straight off the bat and they asked about his problems with making friends and things like that and i kind of thought well he's got friends in his class but the big thing the observation found was he doesn't really play with them he just is there while they're playing and he's involved in so much as he might be using the same things or he might be playing with the cars or somebody else's but he's not really engaging with them and going we're you know we're, we're in a cops and robbers style battle or whatever i don't know and um i just thought he, yeah he's he, like he's got his birthday party coming up and plenty of people have rsp vp yes plenty of people are coming they're excited to see him but it's very much like when i was at primary school I was kind of just of the class. I didn't really have friends at primary school as such. Um, I had maybe in the latter years, and I definitely made friends with people in, in secondary school, but I feel like he's very much like me in that he'd probably have the odd friend around throughout school, whereas his sister's very much got her group of core friends. They've been best friends since the beginning. It's, you know, they're always going to sleepovers and stuff, and I never did any of that till secondary school, and I feel like he's following that route. So again, it's something that they might query about, but it's not abnormal. You know, it's not wrong. It's just, there's lots of ticks, like, yeah, that's perfectly fine, when actually... The observations he's had have flagged the same things we're noticing and picking up on the things that sit uncomfortably with his day-to-day -day life and so it's odd reading their report because they're kind of going yeah i'm not gonna worry about that i'm not gonna worry about that you answered that bit and i'm thinking well hang on you only asked one very niche question that could have it could have had millions of shades of gray to it but you've taken it as a yes no blunt thing and so when you read through it it basically says i'm going to send a questionnaire to the school i'm going to send a questionnaire to this I'm going to invite you to have this review to consider whether it's these options like ADHD and other things. I didn't actually know what the acronyms meant, but they were going to look at them. And they've said that's in three months time. So in three months time, the school will get the bits and pieces. You'll have a chat with us and it will just roll on from there. And so I was reading through the report thinking, well, they don't know that we've had the results back from the other report, the observation where they've actually spent a day with Bosco and they've actually talked to his school and they've talked to the Senko and they've looked at all the evidence and the pieces that, you know, have been gathered over time and they've genuinely spent some hard time with him and the school just looking through it. And they don't just look for autism, they look for, again, a whole range of things and it's interesting because obviously I don't expect the paediatrician to have the same time and dedication. There's not the funding, there's not the resources. That's, you know, it's very different. So I thought, fair enough, they've booked us in, but we don't want to just turn up in three months' time and find that they want to start at this bit over here when we've already kind of been given a nod in the direction we should take. You know, they're still trying to decide on a suitable destination to make a route towards when somebody else has said 
no, we'll take this route towards this destination and we'll rule it out because it, we've ruled out lots of other bits. So I rang them and my, um, Mrs. Sheepdog sent me the number that was on the letter. And I rang that number probably four or five times to say, you know, to, to can I speak to the clinical paediatrician, whatever they're called, community paediatrician. Just kept getting cut off after maybe two minutes of ringing, if that. So then I thought, right, I'll look up the the you know another number for the doctor's name and that came up with like four hospitals that they work at so i texted him which hospital is it so i tried another number that i found for the hospital same thing happened three or four times it just cut me off after a minute and i thought what is this so i, I looked and asked her for another number she found one i rang that tried it twice it kept cutting off i thought i'm gonna give up and everyone i'll try one more time and i tried this last time it must have been the eighth time i dialed a number on my phone and this was during work, so I just shouldn't have really been doing it. I was just worried. I needed to sort it out. And I thought, it's Friday. I don't want to leave it till Monday. That could kick things even further back. So I tried one more time. I got through to a switchboard all of a sudden. And I thought, well, where was that switchboard the first night, uh, seven times I'd rang? That's ridiculous. Switchboard says, you know, hold for the operator. So I held a really blunt operator. I was like, yeah, how can I help? And I was like, <clears throat> you know, uh, communities, paediatrician, please. And she popped me through, and this other lady answered really bluntly again. And they, bless them, they probably worked off their, you know, feet and just swamped. <clears throat> and I explained, I'm calling for my son. You know, he's had this letter through, and you're pursuing something that, whilst we need to pursue it, I don't want you to focus heavily on that when there's a broader conversation going on. We've got other bits and pieces to look at. Here's some more evidence. Here's some more information you're not privy to. Can we reassess the plan before we wait three months and she's listened to me and gone you know fair enough yeah i understand what you're saying she's unfortunately the doctor's not until the 22nd they're on annual leave which again is fine that's normal but give me your number i'll get them to ring back so i know full well i am absolutely never gonna get another call back i've made a note 22nd of Sept of october i'm gonna call them back on that date and the day after and the day after until i get a conversation but Again, I thought to myself, I know so many people that have been through this, and I know that some of them are the sorts of people that wouldn't have rang eight times, that wouldn't have written down the number, uh, the date, and the person, and they're not going to ring back themselves on the 22nd. They're going to wait, and they're going to wait until the 30th, and then they're going to think, I haven't heard back, and then they're going to ring again, if they've even got there in the first place. You know, I, I even part of me for something, my, my wife would have rang once, not got through, thought, I'll try later, rang again, not got through, I'll try later, and she'd have probably done that for a week before she got through. Even then, she have, wouldn't have called back, she'd have, she'd have waited to be called. So I'm thinking that... In a normal situation, you'd probably end up two weeks behind. And then they'd probably, I'm fully expecting to be fobbed off and told, we'll have to write a new letter now, we'll have to do a new thing, we'll have to start it. Even though they could just tweak the paperwork and call us back in, in three months' time. But it just feels messy because this letter doesn't, it explains things, but it's not very clear, it's not very good. And I'm just a bit like, oh God, this is it for three months. And then I'm looking at it all and I'm thinking, when we go in and they have a conversation with us and they ask us questions and they tell us that the re I'm assuming the report would have been sent to the school and received by then. They'll tell us what they think of it and then they'll refer us to something else. We'll have to wait a month or two because I think it was early September that Bosco went in. We'll have to wait a month for them to give us the, the letter. Then we'll probably have to wait another three months to get the appointment again to follow up on whatever thing they're booking. And by that point, it would have been eight months from now which is nine months from when he originally saw the paediatrician. And I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking, it goes back to the conversation I mentioned on the last video. Do we just follow what my sister's friend did and go to a private place? The people, they lived in Buckinghamshire, she said, they basically um, paid £550 for the initial consultation and then I'm guessing £450 for the diagnosis part. Um, it totaled 1000 and she started it third week of December I think it was and finished at the third week of January so one month and I'm thinking if I looked somebody up tomorrow figured out how I was going to pay for it booked it all in and then went we could have this sorted by the first week of December and we'd know before Christmas whether this is worth this is something to pursue and sort out now there's pros and cons with doing that and that's where I'm kind of in a, in a pickle because I spoke to my wife, I spoke to Kevin, and I spoke to you lovely people who've been so helpful and so awesome in the comments talking to me about all this stuff. And the general advice has been, finding out is almost irrelevant. It's, it's almost getting confirmation of what you already know. And 
I don't think my wife's convinced, but I am pretty convinced. I'm convinced enough that I'm talking about it on the internet with you guys. It fits for me. The evidence stacks up. If you go through lists and lists of things, he ticks almost all of them, pretty much all of them. And I know it's not just about ticking boxes and stuff like that, but it just feels right. And it feels like since the school have started acting that way, that he's been different, they've been different, it's been nice. I feel like we have made so much more effort to follow the suggestions and advice from you lot and on the internet and what Kev suggested and all stuff like that. And it has been lovely. Mrs Sheepdog went to the shops today with him because he was off school, because of his upset stomach, and apparently it was brilliant. She just handled everything how she felt the advice suggested, and it was textbook. And it won't always be textbook, but it was textbook today, and it was lovely. And she said it was just incredible having to, you know, having that happen so smoothly. Uh, I'm guessing it was quieter because it was a weekday and stuff like that. Now, finding out isn't going to change any of that if we're just acting the way we are. We could just do this in theory, this forever, and it would be fine because we'd learn to adapt to the behavioural bits, and that would be awesome. But obviously. We want to get the support he needs at school. We want to get the support he needs in life further. We need to make sure we've crossed everything. And <clears throat> the big thing that Kevin's advice was, and someone else, a couple of other people in the in the comments advice was, really, this is just getting a, a thumbs up. Yep, that's what it is. Crack on. At that point, the school then needs to do an educational health care plan. I think that's what it's called. EHCP. I'm guessing that's what it stands for because everyone's just saying EHCP to me. Um, from the Senko. Now, I need to ask her if she's already working on that, if she is waiting to get a diagnosis before she works on that, or whether that's something she can just crack on with. If she can crack on with it, then it means that we can basically say, do it, we'll get a diagnosis, but there's no real rush, and she can crack on. If she's waiting, then we need to get it done as soon as possible, and then she'll get the H e HCP done, because then she has to appeal to go and get funding and support and so on and so forth, which can take time. So I need to talk to her, and I've not had a chance to yet. I should have probably rang her this afternoon as well, but um, that's my plan for Monday. Give her a call and see what she thinks. But in the meantime, it's not just about confirming what we know and that not what what not. I just want peace of mind, and I feel like there's still the conversation. I've not sat and spoke to him about it. I don't really know how you handle that. I've not spoke to his sister about it. I don't really know how to handle that. I feel a bit guilty that you all know before he and his sister knows, which is a bit, I don't know, I feel bad about that. But how do you, I mean, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to make anyone think, I don't want his sister to think differently. That's why it's going to be a hard conversation because no one else thinks differently, but she might because she's little. Um, I don't want him to think differently. I don't want him to panic. So that's a conversation I've got to concern myself with at some point. But I don't want to have to do that until I know what the situation is, basically. Um, so at the moment, EHCP is the priority. Find out what the score is with that. But I feel like I'd rather... I'm impatient. I am impatient. And I feel like I want to research and see if there's anywhere good in the area. So we live on the Cambridgeshire Lincolnshire border. I'm sure plenty of you have seen the, the video where Kev walks up and down the bridge where he's like, I lived here, blah, blah, blah. If I lived here, blah, blah, blah. And we're in the exact same boat. We live in the same border, same town. I can hear Andy when he's playing the bells down the road. He, the, the church he goes to is near my house. Um, you know, we live in pretty much the identical two square miles or whatever. Um, so... Yeah, I feel like we can go private and try and figure this out over the border because I doubt Lincolnshire would have anything. But I don't know. It's just all a bit weird. And I don't envy you people who have spent years having to do it. I feel so like bad that the world is like that. It's frustrating to know that that is how it is for a lot of people. But here we are. And I don't know. I don't know what the answers are, but it's, um, it's interesting. I will let you know what we end up deciding to do obviously i'll track it and i'll let you know how the results turn out obviously but um i just thought i'd do a talk because getting this letter through was kind of like oh okay i wasn't expecting that and it was like we've taken 10 steps forward and then this letter's brought us back three steps because they want to just cover ground we've already kind of covered because they need to do it officially in a certain way and i'm thinking oh god but they're going to make it take absolutely ages i wouldn't be surprised if my eight months was a conservative guess and it was more like a year and a half I'm just nervous now, and uh, yeah, I just I'm back on that mulling it over. Is private better? Um, I'd like to know if anyone else has done the private part because I think most advice has been don't worry about it until you've got the HCP. But 
I just want to know. I'm slightly nervous as well that I, if they said, no, it's not that, find something else, that I've led everyone astray for a couple of videos. That makes me feel guilty. But I know that that's not something that I'm being judged on exactly. I just, it's silly thoughts, loads of silly thoughts. And loads of people have commented on the things they worried about, like, is it my genetics? Is it the way I've done something? Whatever, that's all stuff that's going through our heads. But I think we're all right. It's all good. And I really appreciate all the feedback you've given. I'm going to wrap this up because I wanted it to be a shorter video. I've realised I'm at the 15 minute mark already. Um, I'm sorry for the 30 minute video the other day. I hope it was useful for some of you. If you are liking what you see and you're appreciating the, the, the back and forth, I know I am. It's really helpful. But if you want help, subscribe, comment, like the videos, that kind of thing. I want people who in my position to find it so that I can talk to them. We can share the experience. I want people who've done the ordeal before either it was their own personal journey off their family's journey just i want the feedback because it is interesting it is helpful and i feel like so many people have just told me their story in passing on the comments and i've read it and just thought that's exactly the same or oh i've never even thought of that and i'm really enjoying it's the wrong word because the stories are harrowing and they're sad and they're they're difficult and that sort of thing but I feel like a connection, which is bizarre because I don't know you, but I feel like, yeah, we're sharing this. It's Even if I don't get the same end result, I feel the situation you're going through, even if it's only a little bit, you know, even if it's not as bad. It's, it's odd having that kind of connected experience on something so just... Ugh. So, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, keep in touch. And the next video won't be about all this we're going to uh peterborough on sunday mrs sheepdog's doing uh, the great eastern run she's raising money for bosco and lamb pups nursery um i'm still trying to get I, I, we debated just going by their real names and i think by sunday we'll just go by their real names in that video but i want to make sure that mrs sheepdog is happy with that um uh, we're going to go see tim peak spacecraft which i think kev's already done in his video um we're going to go probably look at toy shops because it's Bosco's birthday soon and I want him to add more stuff to his list and we're just going to gallivant around Peterborough while Mrs Sheepdog runs so yeah we'll see what happens thanks for watching and I'll see you on Sunday